In March through May, it is termites warming season here in Oklahoma. So joining me today is Dr. Brad Card um, with OSU Extension. You're an entomologist um, and your specialty is termites. So if we see a flying insect right now, what do we need to know and is it a termite? Well, this is the termite swarming season as you mentioned, but we also have ant swarming at this time of year. Okay. Both ants and termite swarmers are dark bodied and they look similar. So our extension agents and OSU itself gets many phone calls from homeowners and building owners asking us, do we have termites or ants? Mm -hmm. And if they will send in a digital photograph to us or a good picture, we can usually tell them, tell the difference. And can you tell me a little bit of those differences? Yeah, the termite swarmers, if you look at them closely, you will see that termites have antenna that look like little strings of pearls, little strings of beads. Okay. Whereas ants, do not have that type of antenna. Also termite wings, of which there's two sets, are the same size as the front and rear wings, whereas the rear wings of ants are much smaller than the fore wings. Okay. And also ants have very constricted waistlines, whereas termite waistline is as broad as the thorax. Okay. So you'll see like a pinch section on the ants versus what you would see on a yeah, termite. Yeah, it's a very obvious difference. Okay, excellent. So if we see termites um, or swarming insects, it's first we want to determine whether they are termites or not. Um, are there other signs to identify whether we have termites around our house or not? Well, most homeowners should, especially this time of year, be paying close attention to their foundations around their house. Okay. Because when termites are migrating from the soil into the house, they build mud tubes that protects them from a harsh environment and also predators. Mm -hmm. So they build their mud tubes up the side of the structure to get into the, into the house. And that's how you tell they're there, unless they're swarming inside your house, which is then very obvious. Because they like dark, moist conditions, right? So right. that kind of protects them as they're climbing into your house. The termite workers who do all the damage don't really have eyes. Okay. They're strictly working in the dark and they will feed on any type of cellulose material in the house, whether it's paper, sheetrock paper, wood in the walls, cabinetry, anything that's wood or cellulose based, they will feed on and do much damage. So if you see those mud tubes, that's a uh, cause for concern a little bit. It's 100% certain that at least termites were there at some point in time. Okay, so what are termites doing in our homes? Well, if termites get inside your structure, and normally when you notice termites, they've been in there several years. Mm -hmm. And if you look inside the wall, you can see the type of damage that termites are doing inside the wall. And so that breaks stuff. down the integrity of your studs and your walls and things like that. If left unchecked, eventually the studs in the wall will lose their structural integrity mm -hmm. and can no longer hold the weight and you'll actually get sagging, sagging roof lines. Now it looks like there's some soil in there also. Where is that soil coming from? Termites transport mud to build their tubes uh -huh. and build it up into the structure because it maintains high humidity. Oh, okay. And termites like extremely high humidity, so they build their mud and pack their galleries and their workings with mud to maintain that high humidity. So you can also see some more damage here. This is what a stud inside your wall can look like wow. if the termites are left unchecked. Okay. They'll also feed on your, they won't feed on it, but they'll, they'll tunnel in and damage your insulation. They don't actually feed on the insulation. Mm -hmm. They can't digest it, but they will do damage inside your ins insulation. They will chew through sheetrock styrofoam insulation to get to cellulose materials. Okay, and if you're a new home builder, you can buy treated insulation, is that correct? Treated insulation, like you see here, foam insulation treated with a chemical, which mm -hmm. will stop termites, is available. Okay, all right. And, and now this, you have this, this is a rather large hole. This isn't termite damage? No, if you have exposed wood like this, especially porch eaves, or underneath your structure. Mm. This is carpenter bees okay. chewing, chewing in here. Okay, so you can see the significant You see there's no mud. There. It's a nice half inch round hole. Definitely carpenter bee damage. And if you don't paint over this wood or protect this wood, mm -hmm. you can get hundreds of carpenter bees doing a lot of damage. Oh, okay, all right. Definitely so not termites. If we've determined that we do have termites, um, now it's not something that we need to panic necessarily about, but we do need to treat. You can't ignore the problem because it's going to only get worse. How do we treat it? Okay, it definitely, once termites are in your structure, mm -hmm. they're not going to go away. You have to do something about it or they'll continue to do damage. So there's two main strategies for, for managing termites. 
Okay. One of those is putting a complete insecticide barrier around the exterior of your structure. And we do that with a trenching and rotting. This rod is connected to an insecticide tank. Okay. And I can put this rod in the soil around the structure and put chemical in the soil. But I have to trench also okay. to put a comp continuous barrier around the structure. And is that an immediate result that you will be it's, taking care of those termites? It's a, a very rapid solution to the termite problem. Okay. Quick acting. Uh, whereas the second strategy, baits, mm -hmm. which these are, are bait tubes. These are inserted into the ground mm -hmm. around the structure approximately every 20 feet. There's a toxic insect growth regulator bait cartridge inside these mm -hmm. tubes. But it take, could take several months for the termites to find these baits. And so, so when we say baits, to clarify though, we're not actually enticing the termites to come towards our house. They've changed it a little bit, correct? Right. These, these do not attract termites. They're cellulose based. So once the foraging workers find these, uh -huh. they'll feed on it and take it back to the rest of the colony and feed their colony mates. Okay. Because termites feed each other as part of their biology. Mm -hmm. And so, no, we're not attracting them to the structure. But once they find these, they'll recruit their nest mates to the bait to, to spread it through the colony and eventually eliminate the entire colony. Okay, because that's actually made up of really good cellulose, so they think that's like a steak in there and they're really enjoying this that. This is high quality, pure cellulose that the termites uh, will feed on readily. Okay. And there's more than one commercial station out there. There's a second station here which works just as well. This is the Centricon system, this is the advanced system where the, the bait materials inside this are in little compressed pellets. Mm -hmm. Similar though, once the termites find these, they take it back to the nest and feed the rest of the colony. So these are buried into the ground, so all you see... If this was the soil surface, they'd mm -hmm. be buried right, right up to here. Okay, and, the, and there's no way that your, your pets and things like that can get into this, no, correct? No, this, this, these, these caps are locked on tightly, and so to, you'd have to have some kind of tools or equipment to open mm -hmm. this up. So, so they're very pet safe. Also, these are insect growth regulator chemicals. They're not standard insecticides. Okay. So they're very low toxicity to humans and mammals. Okay. So that actually prevents those termites from shedding and going to their next life sites and just... It disrupts their biology so okay. they, don't, they do no longer can molt successfully. Okay. Is there a way that we can, uh, when we're looking for a contractor, um, you guys have a website that you can go to and also there's an organization that they can be a part of. Right. We do have an Oklahoma Pest Management Association. Uh, we have regular meetings and training sessions, and if you're a member of that association, which is also associated with the National Pest Management Association, you're always up getting updates, you're always being trained, you're always having classes, and so that helps you be a better professional. Okay, and so they have a list of all of their contractors that are part of that association you, as well? That is correct. You can go on to the ODAF website, mm -hmm. or you can go on to the pestded.okstate.edu website and find all these companies. So, okay. I would, I would uh, recommend uh, that you do a little research before you hire a pest control company. Okay, excellent. And one last question is we always get, does mulch cause termites? How do we apply mulch to our landscape and prevent termites? Mulch around the landscape, like you see around these structures and, and in the Oklahoma Botanic Garden here, is very beneficial to plants, but it's also cellulose and it also keeps moisture in the soil. Mm -hmm. All those create conducive conditions to termites. Okay. So when I put mulch around my structure, I've actually created conditions favorable for termite proliferation. Now, termites naturally occur though in nature. They're everywhere. Ter termites are highly beneficial in the normal environment. We just want to maybe discourage them from coming right up to our house. So how do we apply mulch so that it is discouraging to those termites to enter our home? What you have to do with mulch is, if it's building up along the side wall of your structure, directly against the structure, mm -hmm. you need to rake that back off the structure five or six inches. Okay. So you can see the bare soil around the structure. Okay. That way if termites do show up and they start tunneling up into the structure, you'll see the mud tubes on the side of the foundation or the house. So keep it down below where the concrete foundation is and off yeah. of the keep, siding Keep it away brick. from the structure four or five, six inches would be good. Okay. That way you can inspect it much more easily. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Card. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. 
and join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.